although he still manages to get the job done. Here comes Tadpole now through the air. See if he can set up a teammate or get it in by himself. No wow. way. Look for the dunk in the air. Justin coming off the ceiling, falls down. Still got the flip. Ooh. Pitches it off the ground and in. What's up, people, and welcome to Esports in 30. I'm super hyped to have you because today we're spending the next half an hour talking about Rocket League. I'm Brody Moore, and this is Nick Doucet, and my goodness, did this weekend of promo relegation pop up. And, and Nick, I know that you're a little bit smug right now. I, we don't have it on camera anywhere, but <laughs> off, <laughs> no, evidence. Off, no evidence of this, but off camera, Brody and I were talking about this heading into this one, and I predicted four out of four, and Brody said there was no way. Well, guess what, Brody? Well, what it wasn't for tell me, tell me you were almost right. You I was more close. right than you. Yeah. Let's not talk about that, because I know I was there and you were watching, but are we really enough to break all this down? Probably not. I didn't think so either. So right after these highlights, I think we should bring in my buddy Lawler to help us out. That clear, critical for buying time. Now on the attack! And Gyro! And gets the corner boost steal as well. And gets the... What? Chance for Reynolds! Reynolds! Oh the my goodness! In. Evil Genius is still hunting. Trippe against the back uh -oh. wall. Corrupted G. Oh no! Evil Geniuses take game one! Keep it close. Karma picks it up around the back wall. Looking for Jaywiz. Jaywiz shoots! And oh, Karma! Karma! Scores on the dunk! The Corrupted G is there. Knows you can't get back to the wall. Killed by Classics. Jaywiz flies in from midfield around the corner. Bounces it off the ramp. Karma scores! Splice take the lead! Trying to kill the ball against Arsenal. Failing in his endeavors. Reynolds back over to Arsenal, looking for Gyro. That shot! Oh, oh, Gyro! And a great touch there from Reynolds to keep the play at least a little bit dangerous to force the defense to respond. That's exactly what Miss did, but a touch back out to Arsenal. Look at the passing play from the Peeps. It goes in for them. And the Peeps are your new RLCS team in North America. They'll see them next season in RLCS Season 8. Low boost, but she's making the most of it. Keeps control of the ball, gets the corner boost, going for an incredible Oh, play. you're joking. Oh, and no. He saves it. Oh, heartbreak. Birds and bees getting a demo here from Mist. Hawks are the delight. <laughs> the rival series come into today and absolutely dominate. The Peeps are in RLCS, and now the birds and the bees join them. It was an all rivals affair in North America as the peeps and the birds and the bees booked their spot in season eight. Unfortunately for splicing evil geniuses, it's better luck next season as they are sent to the rival series. Now that is a lot to process and frankly, I might freak out a little bit without the help of my desk partner, Adam Waller Thornton. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Can't get up to me, can you? No, I need more. I can't stop. <laughs> um, I, I, are you sick of me is the question here, but... Um, we'll, we'll figure that out later. <laughs> yeah. what, what, like, can we wrap our heads around this real quick? Yeah, I, I mean, I was, I was feeling pretty smug because I thought the Rival Series were going to make it through, uh, particularly North America, but I didn't expect the Peeps, for example, to be as dominant as they were, particularly on offense. Of the 11 games they played, like six, they had three goals or more, and all of their wins against the Birds and the Bees, they had like tons of goals. I was a little bit caught off guard seeing the second seed. Lawler, were you caught off guard by just how explosive the offense of this team was? Not at all. Mm. Um, which sounds kind of arrogant, but if you <laughs> watched their performance last week at DreamHack mm. for their qualifiers for Dallas, I mean, they beat five RLCS teams there, and it was just the momentum kept going, which is fantastic for them. So coming in, we all knew they were a pretty high favorite, even though Birds and the Bees was the team that went 7-0. Mm -hmm. The Peeps have always been a fan favorite. They've always been someone pretty much everybody's cheered for and just kind of yeah. waited for their time to come. And the fact that they qualified this time, I don't think was too shocking. Plus, no offense to the RLCS teams, we weren't too convinced with them. So, yeah, it's, yeah I think it was just a matter of time for Peeps. It's tough, though, because it's it, before the promotion tournament happens, you know, you see those RLCS teams at the bottom of the barrel, but they were playing the best of the best, whereas, you know, Birds and the Bees and um, Peeps right. were, were playing, you know, the maybe some newcomers even into yeah. that, that league during that league play. So, it, it were you ever questioning maybe the consistency i mean the peeps sure they did good the week before but a lot of times we've seen that fall apart for these teams the week after yeah you always i mean that's kind of the one thing you really want to look for in rocket league especially when you're analyzing teams is how consistent are these things happening and just by watching the peeps like you can see their play style and what they were doing on paper was going to work no matter what teams they played as long as they did them at a high level because speed is always the one thing that we question can they keep up that momentum and yeah. that speed 
even against other teams that may have better defenses. Now, if you put peeps up against a team like Energy, they get smacked because it's Energy, but relatively against any of the other teams, they're pretty competitive, and you're starting to see that trend for any rival series team. Uh, you I mean you're talking nine out of twelve teams have promoted from the rival series over the course of since season four, yep. so it's becoming more of a thing. And then you look at how they're performing now in the RLCS. You're looking at FlyQuest that is now rogue. They're going to land after one season of the RLCS. Barcelona, even though they kind of cheat the system, has an auto bid going yeah. in. You're looking at all these other teams. So it's becoming more of a trend that the RLRS teams more than likely are more competitive than the RLCS teams. So it's pretty pretty exciting to see. Well, let's let's talk about the other team that did have a really good record um, and then weren't as convincing, but did make it in. Birds and the Bees, um, they uh, they kind of had Splice's number. Yeah, you they, yeah I, was, I was looking at this and they overcame two game deficits against Splice twice in both the series they played. Mm -hmm. um, and for a lot, do you think that that's kind of like a sign that seems maybe like has like a level of maturity that you don't see maybe in other RLS teams where they can overcome big deficits against teams? I mean this in the nicest way because I love all those players. It was more of a thing of Splice than it was a thing of Birds mm -hmm. and Bees. Splice has not had a good season. Um, simply put, they came in week one and we saw flashes of like, okay, there's potential. We can see that these guys are capable of being an RLCS team. But throughout the season, you saw the glaring issues that Karma needs help and she can't be expected to go off every single week in order for them to win. And despite her playing out of her mind again in the promotion tournament, for those that do remember when they promoted, she was the MVP of that week. She played again that caliber of play. She played really, really well, but when you don't have help in this day and age, you falter. The fact that they brought it as far as they did just shows the potential of that team. And no no doubts to Birds and Bees, like they still had to show up, they still had to play yeah. as a team, and they did. But I think a lot of it really comes to Splice. Splice just needs help. There has to be a roster change well, in order for that team to be successful. That, that makes me question then what you think about the Birds and Bees going into the RLCS during next season. I mean, like if you think that it, it wasn't simply just a case of them being better than Splice, it was Splice beating themselves up, do you think Birds and the Bees really have any kind of chance going into the next season? Because there are a lot of good teams now in the North American RLCS. Yeah, I think there's always a chance, right? Like you you put yourself in a position to go 7-0 in the RLRS, give yourself a number one seed, mm -hmm. and then basically prove that, yeah, you can compete against some of these teams. But yes, it is one of the lower level RLCS teams. Am I worried for Birds and the Bees more than the Peeps? Of course. I, I think they are going to be one of the weakest teams, but to their benefit, the next season isn't for months. You know, there's a lot That's of true. time to be able to scrim against these players. They've now automatically been promoted to rank X in the six man's group. So there is a lot of opportunities for these guys to really grind it out and continue. And who knows, maybe they do pick up one of the teams or players like Drippe, probably gonna be a free agent. I can expect if EG lets him go, he'll be a good pickup. Same thing with Splice, Karma's still a good player. So we always see roster teams or players even migrate from the teams that promote. I mean, look at Justin. Justin came in with Out of Style back in the day and was the reason they made it. No offense to Licinio mm -hmm. and his teammate, but he got snagged up and then that team fell apart. So there's always that potential that they either pick up a new player or otherwise. I hope they stay together because they made it together, but there's a lot of time in between now and then between all the dream hacks and everything else that they're going to be able to grind and uh, hopefully bring their team to that next level. Well, Nick, I know you got some more points on the splice too, but I'm still kind of curious now about the state of the, the RLCS now that we have those two new, the birds and the bees and the peeps in. Is this mm -hmm. kind of the best uh, the you know we've ever seen the rival teams? I mean, we've seen in the past, a lot, you know, some teams always going one and six or 0 oh and seven, you know, um, and the splice even this season was that. Do you think that these two teams have uh, way better potential to have a better record then than we've ever seen in any RLCS? Peeps, most definitely. Um, <clears throat> But are we going to have another situation with birds and the bees going on? Yeah, that would be unfortunate. I mean, that's, I mean, it's tough, man. It's, um, I think NA is still pretty heavily solidified with your top three. Um, Space Station is making a pretty good argument for them to be in that top four. Um, a lot of people actually believe that they're a better pick than G2 right now for top three. Um, but I think the fact that the conversation is even happening is what leads to what you're saying is, yeah, it is the most competitive we've ever seen, but I still think that NA usually has one team that's weaker than the rest and it's pretty glaring. I think right now that is Birds and the Beast. Um, and it's hard to argue, but does that mean they can't step up? Like I said, three, three four months is a lot of time for these teams to play. 
um, and maybe we all of a sudden see them shock the world. Like we we don't know; it's mm -hmm. too early to tell. But that's kind of the exciting part is going into next season. I know you and I are going to both be on the desk and be like, okay, what's happened to these guys over the next three months? Mm -hmm. You know, let's find out. Yeah, we get to see it yeah. unfold. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, a team that has a lot of questions to answer in those next few months is, of course, Evil Geniuses. You touched mm. on Drippe. Uh, has to be absolutely gutted. Oh, you saw his tweet. Yeah, man, man, he man, was just devastated. devastated. Coming over from Australia and getting relegated. The offense was just basically non-existent, especially in the, the last series against Splice. So the question now is, they're going to DreamHack, but after DreamHack, like, where does this team go from here? Hopefully not home. Um, <laughs> I want Drippe to stay with us as long as possible, but yeah. it's tough. Um, I don't know enough about behind the scenes with that team. It's one of the few teams that I actually don't get to talk to other than the players or the coach themselves. Um, but from the sounds of it, they're still in support of the team. I think they're still going to take a, a, a season in the RLRS, you know, figure their issues or a possible roster change. I honestly believe that team has always had an issue with the roster. Mm -hmm. And Drippe just further ex exemplifies that with his playstyle. I don't think fits currently with Classics and Corrupted G. I think something has to change, whether it be a roster or him in general changing his playstyle, which is always really tough as well. Considering I think is what he is what EG wants to build a roster around because to my to my opinion He is the best player on the team. Yeah, we just haven't seen the team work as a unit It's still pretty convoluted based upon what they're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. whether it be Juppé bringing in this more pass heavy centered inside touch centric kind of offense While the other two are just kind of a hit and chase or like it's really weird. So um, I know that there needs to be some help. I know Fireworks is probably on top of it already, their coach. Um, but something's got to give. Something on the team has to change. I mean, it seems like, you know, it's unfortunate that they had a season to try and figure it out, and this is where it ended up. Now, you kind of mentioned briefly that teams might be looking at your Karmas or your Drippes. Just off the top of your head here, uh, before we move on from North America, what teams do you think might be looking at players like this uh, to potentially pick yeah, up I'm and make changes? Like, where in? would they go yeah. in the, the landscape of the RLCS right now? Uh, probably the best suited would be Drippe to Ghost, even though mm, they already the have too yeah. much offense. Oh, <laughs> but I do like that Drippe can play defensive as well. It's just the difficulty, I think, is he's challenging himself knowing that he needs to move upfield and he needs to create opportunities, but he's stuck on defense and it creates this this lackluster defense from what we saw. But, I mean, you take him and you put him on a team like uh, like Ghost, where you've seen what memory and, and Lethmere can do on offense, and it's pretty excellent. And all of a sudden you add in this more solidified player because i mean back when rocket league started all the third man roles were your guys that were the best when it came mechanically because they were consistent they didn't make mistakes they can make something out of nothing and you see what it does for for energy with a player like justin is when they're in they're in a troublesome spot he uses his mechanics and his creativity to get out of those positions and then set up his teammates imagine if you have this lethemir uh let them, yeah i said it right i almost said memory let me at the same time but let the mirror and memory and they're creating these passing opportunities in this offensive powerhouse and you still have drip a and back to clean mm -hmm. it up if need be right. Right. i well, think it's an opportunity but out of any of the other teams i i don't know if you swap yeah. why would you i, I guess we'll if, find if, out we'll see if they stick with it. i mean they're still got yeah. dream hack ahead so we'll see if they can uh, stick it out there but all right dude that pretty much uh, covers na right now but europe was equally as dramatic if not more so we're going to take a quick sec to gather our thoughts while you check out these highlights Are just forced flakes off that ball, but it doesn't matter. The pickup from Mystic just too slow, and now here comes complexity again. Oh, and Greasy has the shot. Complexity. They were still competitive, and Greasy takes us off the corner, almost uncontested. Magnus has the shot. This goes in for complexity. The bricks. It's a whirlpool of disaster. Again, another pass across for Mouse Sports. That one cut down by Veloce. It's just. One, oh, oh, one freaky! We saw it yesterday, Tigre. Veloce on the press, wastes more time off the clock, a lot. Back to Tigre, bumped out of the way, and now the shot is open, and Veloce! Alex, now on the other end, gets his flip off the ceiling, gets a dunk off the post, bouncing out, and Mystic. It's the ball to safety. Alex with the dunk, and oh, he dunked it again! He did it! The ball goes nowhere, Bricks on the counterattack. 
Center ball, speeds there. And Flakes has been so scary for complexity a couple times now, even in this game alone, that he's able to find himself above the net with the ball coming back. Now a third time, can he get a second touch? He does, knocks it down for Flakes, and complexity up by two. Double commit, and the miss from Flame, and that is it. Complexity sweep their way through to the RLCS. The Loche want this, they need a miracle on the kickoff. They may get oh, that. Oh, there it is. Deals off the backboard, racing for it. Oh, you're yeah, joking. Unbelievable. <laughs> you disgusting, monstrous piece of filth. The bricks hang on. Coxier 97 retains his spot in the RLCS. Welcome back. In a stunning display, Complexity made like their new logo and shined like the stars as they advanced to the RLCS. Not so much for Mouse Sports and Veloce, who took a tumble as Cooksier and the Bricks saved themselves from relegation. Back on the couch, still with Lawler, and holy crap, was Europe ever tense, my dude. Uh, yeah, I know you're a little biased towards it, and it's fine because he's the OG. Cooksier's still yeah. in the RLCS, so everything is okay. It's safe, it's okay, fine. guys. You can breathe. I, couldn't, I could barely <laughs> imagine a world where Cooksier was relegated. Like, my mind yeah. did not compute with this thought. Yeah, I know. I, 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 did it ever cross your mind that maybe he wasn't going to make it? And, like, what, what was the factor that caused you to think that, Lawler? If so. Uh, when they got smashed by complexity in their first <laughs> game of the day. Yeah, I was a little worried. Um, we haven't seen them really bounce back from anything this season, mm -hmm. so um, it's just that's what Cookster does, man. He goes to break your heart and then saves it at the last second. So, that, congrats to Bricks. Glad to see him back. Is it, I, mean, is it was, it, I was about to say, it was, it, you know, Cooks here felt like he was playing pretty well. I actually thought that Speed was one of the players that yeah, really stepped insane. it up this year. Yeah. He had some nice solo plays. He was, he was really uh, playing like the man we saw when they won WSL. Can he keep it up is the he, question, though. Like, we know that this, this man can do it, but, like, throughout the season, it, it wasn't that clear that he was going to. Yeah, there was a lot of issues throughout the season. It's just... I mean, they started off rough. I mean, you look at the difference between what would have happened if he wasn't in Florida for that first week. Yeah. So, yeah, and for the for the general public that doesn't know, I mean, Speed was in Orlando, Florida. They had a vacation that they planned many months ago that mm -hmm. he couldn't avoid, and it just happened to fall in the first week of RLCS, and he comes in, he's playing on a laptop with quite a bit of ping, and they lose to Triple Trouble, a team that a lot of us expected them to beat convincingly. Mm -hmm. And because of that one loss, that was the difference between them being in playoffs and them being in the uh, promotion relegation tournament. So uh, a lot can change. It, it just goes to show the importance of each week. So mm -hmm. um, that game went to five and was extremely close. Um, well, let's let's talk about the, uh, one of the teams that did make it. And complexity, like I actually didn't have complexity possibly making it in. People on Twitter definitely in the poll I put up were saying yes, but they did and they popped off. Like Flakes, though, it was like just an absolute madman. Yeah, similar situation to North America, where the best seeded team is the one that actually comes out the most convincing. Mm -hmm. And NA was Peeps, and EU was complexity, and you can see it in their play style. Uh, Huge, huge list of veteran talent. Yeah. Uh, the addition of Flakes, though, really brings it together. Uh, I know you mentioned while we were on the show about how the last time we saw Greasy, he did not look like he was up to par. It looked mm -hmm. like he was playing seasons past, just in speed and decision making. But Flakes has really tied that team together and had a MVP caliber weekend. I mean, mm -hmm. he took MVP title for that weekend and rightfully so. It's just what he does for that team relieves a lot of pressure from the other two. It allows yeah. them to get that little bit of extra time to put themselves in a better position for success. But the fact that they overran the other teams as convincingly as they did just shows how motivated and how much they've been working. Um, it's one thing to be a pro player and then knock your, get knocked down and then have seasons to basically try to come back. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a motivating factor for these players that have tasted victory. I mean, Greasy is a freaking world champion for Christ's sake. So yeah. there's got to be something passed, in the though. tank. But yeah. it feels like it was a different Still, era, man, maybe. you know that yeah. feeling. You know that they're grinding harder than they ever have. Like, there's a new, like, focus that they're putting in to basically get back. And it shows. They look really good right the, now. The, the the question is, though, you know, like Magnus mentioned, that like, they're, they're basing their play style around Flakes and just allowing him to have those opportunities. You know, it... Do you think that's going to last, though, up in the RLCS, or do you think they're going to have to adjust that play style a lot of pressure to, to put a little one more person. three man? Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's scary. Um, the harsh reality of it is, if, play, if Flakes isn't playing well, then it doesn't work, right? Like you are, like Nick said, putting all of your cards in Flakes, and yeah. Flakes is a fantastic player. He's definitely a highlight player, 
But if things falter with him, then it's going to be relying on the other two stepping up. Yeah. And Flake's taking more of a backseat, which I don't think that's something they've had to face yet. So uh, hopefully it never gets to that. But it is something to consider because not everybody plays perfect. People yeah. have off days. So exactly. um, you're further exemplifying that when you're coming up against even harder teams. When a team like Vitality is up against you and they're the super fast aggressive, you're going to see them exploit some of these weaknesses. So um, I think those are great moments though because it's kind of a reality check to complexity where they're like, okay, we do have glaring issues mm -hmm. and it only makes them better, right? So. I guess we'll find out when the season starts. <laughs> I want to yeah. bring it to our other RLRS team because Veloce, uh, one of the things that Corelli was talking a lot about mm -hmm. is that we didn't quite see the same team that he was casting when they were in the RLRS. You mentioned that you know these veterans were hungry, and I imagine the Freaky was super hungry to prove everybody wrong yeah. about him. And unfortunately, they didn't quite get there. So what was uh, Brody was suggesting to me, maybe it was a little bit of nerves. What was your read on, on what held Veloce back in this situation? And this is the third time it's happened um, <laughs> that they find themselves in the promotion relegation tournament. So they dropped down two seasons ago when they were secret mm -hmm. after the worst season in RLCS. Yeah, it's the worst performing roster in RLCS history with like a negative 18 game def differential. It's not good. So they drop down and they've been to this position the previous season as well and just fall short. So. For some reason, when everything's on the line and when it matters most, Veloce has fallen short. Um, I don't know if it's a mental block, same similar uh, simil situation to someone like Fruity when they were getting reverse swept, mm -hmm. or what it is just closing up that series. I think it's one of those scenarios to where until they do it and get over that hurdle, it's going to continue to happen. Yeah, um, like it, it's, it's either you come into that weekend with like that mental block knowing that you know maybe it failed before it's like it's gonna get at you and you're it's, gonna slow it down. sticks with you man it sticks with you i mean i tweeted it a couple times like this is the most stressful environment for any pro in rocket league mm -hmm. all the pros say it all the coaches say it anybody who's been involved in the pro scene absolutely knows it like it's one thing for the rlcs teams that are having a rough season to drop down and no have to face the fact that we could lose our org. We could possibly no longer get paid a real salary. Mm -hmm. Like I, I survive on this. Like if I don't get this, I'm done. And then you have these other teams that have had a fantastic season, put themselves in a position to move in and pretty much change their entire lives. That is a lot of pressure as well. So it goes both ways. And for a lot of the guys having to live up to that expectation, it's not an easy thing. And, and that's not to discredit. I mean, a lot of people give these teams a hard time after they drop or or relegate or whatever it is, but that's when they need the support the most. So, yeah. you know, I'm here to say like, give these guys a round of applause. They had a fantastic season and they put themselves in a position and they fell short by a game. Yeah, Like even exactly, though they weren't yeah. performing their best, they still went to seven against Bricks. No. Yeah, this brings up a question that I've been, you know, asking a lot about, and we talk a lot about mm -hmm. a lot of different esports on this show, um, and some of them have actually removed promotion relegation, and promotion relegation is still a core part of the RLCS, but it's only been like what three years in the RLCS? Yeah, we're we're on seven seasons now, yeah. um, three years, and it's we you know, we introduced the promo relegation a few seasons in. Yeah. So you said it's it's a lot of pressure, it's a lot of stress. Is promotion relegation healthy for Rocket League right now, or do you see a future where it just doesn't exist anymore? It needs to exist. How are we supposed so the RLRS as a system is fantastic. Because how many look new at the talent ta we got yeah, in look at the talent that has been breeded from that system. Uh -huh. Even if they're promoting up, it's allowing us to find new talent and and basically allow them a place and a chance to prove themselves. Because you look at all the big names, Justin being probably the most notable, he was bred from that system. Mm -hmm. I ignite, same situation for TSM, and now he's on one of the most prolific rosters and orbs in esports history. So I think it's super important. And to me, it is, as a player, those stresses are only going to keep happening in your career. There's always gonna be moments where you come up at adversity and you have to try to face that, whether it be on a live stage in front of thousands of people or otherwise. So for us to get rid of it, just because it's a really stressful environment, I think is silly because of what it promotes. And at any point, like there's gonna be times where you need to prove yourself against mm -hmm. the worst teams in RLCS, if you phrase it that way. These were the worst teams, and if you can't beat the worst teams that were this season, what makes you think you're going to be able to compete against the best teams? Like, I, I don't want to waste my time. It helps with with complacency, I suppose, as well with the RLCS yeah. teams, knowing that there is a, a chance for that stressful situation. Yeah, there's, too, people, right? there's people gunning for them. It should motivate them to play even harder. I mean, all these teams that just promoted need to realize that their mm -hmm. career is now just starting. Like, 
they finally got themselves to a position where you are truly a pro and you're now playing in the RLCS, the most prolific or the most highlight worthy place for your career. Mm -hmm. Now the grind really begins. You have to put in more work than you've ever put in before to not only prove that it wasn't a mistake, but also mm -hmm. earn your spot and keep your spot. That's not an easy thing to do. Yep. Now, if, uh, I, I, you're asking about uh, just the amount of talent that we've seen. Yeah, so too. one of the things that I've noticed in other esports is like as the esports goes more and more years, there's less and less talent coming up from those lower levels. But Rock League doesn't seem to have that problem. As you mentioned, like your Justins and your Flakes and every and uh, last season, like your Alphas who won EU MVP, you know, every season it seems that we have a new player that's just incredible. So how much talent do we actually have yet to see in Rock League, in your opinion? I mean, you look at some of these teams that are playing in Dreamhack qualifiers where the kids are 13, 14. And they're like the new coming of Scrub Killer, and there's three of them on one team. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I think Rocket League doesn't follow suit into some of those other games for two reasons. One, it is brand new. None of the mechanics you learned as a kid, none of the things in intuition that, that you translates. learned FPS, it doesn't translate. It's never happened before. The only ones that have are our SART vets from, from the original game, the predecessor, and they're already retiring, or there's only like three or four of them left. Mm -hmm. Scrub now is the youngest and just getting his start a season and, and a half ago, roughly. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're inspiring this younger generation to now see this game they've never seen before, and the reach is still happening with the F Epic Games acquisition. Who knows how many of those younger kids that play Fortnite are going to hop on the train and all of a sudden we see all this mm -hmm. influx of players. Like, we just don't know. FPS has been around for a long time. Rocket League is not. That's exciting, true, man. Yeah, super exciting. I, I, I love it. Rocket League's only gonna get better and better. Lawler, unfortunately, we are out of time, but thank you so much for calling in and sharing your thoughts and feelings with, with us. Uh, let's chat soon, eh? Yeah, always a pleasure. Appreciate you guys having me. Okay, Brody, I have a question for you to okay. put all of this promo tournament talk a little bow on it. Okay. Who is your MVP? Now, I know we had one from NA and one yeah. from you on the broadcast, but overall. Well, it's it's going to line up with what we do on the show uh, on the RLCS because we all vote. It's it's a democracy over there, right? So mm -hmm. we, we you, all... You're not the desk dictator. <laughs> yeah, right? I wish... I No, I just get to move conversation. I don't get to tell who the MVP is. But we, the, Flakes, for sure. Um, he was is, incredible. Yeah, I, I have to put Flakes above everybody else. I mean, like the fact that Magnus, uh, uh, just a madman himself on the field, puts all of his eggs into trusting Flakes and says, our game plan is to let Flakes do whatever he wants to do. And, and that's, complexity that's crazy. Their games were their games were not close. Their games were convincing dunks yeah. the whole way through. So the, you know, it's I still question whether going into the RLCS that's gonna work a lot. If you shut down Flakes or if he just has a bad week as you know Waller was mentioning, yeah. then you know that that whole system could fall apart. But Flakes man, this guy popped off. Reynolds was another one that was really uh, close, but I, I do feel like he, he was getting a lot of help from from Arsenal sure. as well, right? Okay. So Flakes um, it is. Yeah, Flakes for sure. All man. right. So uh, next up this coming weekend we've got Dream Hack Dallas. Mm. I saw a bunch of tweets, all the players are flying there. What's really cool about this tournament and I think a lot of with a lot of the dream hacks is we're kind of getting like a little bit of a pre RLCS finals test yeah, yeah, land yeah. and also we're going to see some of the newly promoted teams play against each other and some play against some of their future RLCS was... competitions so uh, and also I should mention group B is ridiculously stacked yeah it's got like you look at all the groups and you're like oh, okay this one looks fine and it's like NRG EG dig. splice dig renegade yeah. all in one group <laughs> so Brody quick thoughts on, so on dream hacks. For, for me it was like Whenever I watch other esports like CSGO and that, and I saw so many events happening for them, I'm mm -hmm. like, don't you just get tired of seeing the same teams play over and over? And, it, and it's like, Sometimes. I'm like, oh, I, I like, you know, RLCS is just, it's primo. Like, this is the time to get to see it and it adds more to it. But now that the Dream Hacks are happening, I'm actually getting really hyped for them because it gives us more history well, and story, a right? Like, history. Have, so it's a land, too, because RLCS is online, which makes yeah. a difference. It makes yeah. a huge oh, difference. Oh, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not, yeah, it's not like you're just seeing these teams play online, like from their, their rooms. You're actually seeing actual experience and this is history you can now bring to the RLCS yeah. so this is super exciting the biggest thing for me is going to be seeing like the the orgs like EG and that uh, you know like the, this is a big question mark for those players I for, think like, this is the them. last last right? chance saloon for your, for yeah, your like, and your EGs you're trying to prove now to this org hey don't drop us don't j go take another team we or saw dismantle Rogue, the roster yeah because Rogue did this they they, they lost the roster and the ro as soon as they dropped the rivals and took a, um, a team up in the RLCS took over FlyQuest roster so that could happen for EG mm -hmm. as well um, you know with two unsigned teams in there now so so this is a chance for like Drippy and them to show, okay, no, and especially for Corrupted G and Classics to say, we're still good. Mm -hmm. It was just that weekend, guys. Like, trust yeah. us, it was just that weekend. Let us prove to you here. So I think if they can do that, they can, um, they have a real chance of keeping 
they're, sp they're organized. I think I'm most excited to watch. We've got two OC teams. We've got no LATAM teams, unfortunately, uh, as Dallas, but we do have two OC teams. We've got, what, Icon yeah. and Renegades. Yeah. And Renegades is at LAN. Well, so I'm glad to see Icon because yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't make it to We LAN. got CJ, CJ on at A LAN. That's all that matters. Yeah. Like, yeah I th and that's I'm, I'm excited to see how they stack up because it's going to be a real big litmus test, I'd say, for, for these teams heading into RLCS. Yeah, well, we mentioned it a few weeks ago on, on, on the show is, is that I, I said I was kind of worried about that region, especially taking Drip A out of there, one of their star players mm -hmm. and now you have uh, of course almost all the chiefs just dis gone and disbanded yeah. and, and switched up so that was the one team that seemed to be able to compete at the world stage but now it's all just kind of spread out um now I, I think maybe we're actually getting a situation where it's it's good like the talent spreading out and it's making the whole region better yeah. i was worried that all the teams were going to be subpar mm -hmm. but now we get to see that we get to yeah. see if okay are you guys actually just spreading the talent out? Yeah. I wasn't super hyped going into the DreamHack before RLCS, but with the RLCS behind us now, I'm yeah. really excited for this one. I'm stoked, but that is all the time that we have for today. I'm so ready for DreamHack, and we'll be talking all about it next week. Until then, we got FPS Friday tomorrow, as well as Unmuted, so you don't want to miss that. Type socials in the chat and tweet at me, letting you know what you think about DreamHack. We'll see you later.